Okay, we are back, and we have the one and only Franz Wagner here with us to kick off our summer podcast schedule. Franz, I appreciate you coming on, man. For sure, man. Thanks for having me. Well, tell tell the people where you're at right now and what you're what you're doing currently. Um, I'm in LA right now. Um, just got here a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, just trying to work out and get ready for for all the pre-draft stuff. Um, it starts, I think, in July for me to, to work out for the team. So. Um, just trying to get in the best shape possible to, to be ready to go. What's your day to day? Cause some of those days they, they can be grueling for a while to the draft. Yeah. Um, it's not too bad for me right now. Um, I'm working out in the morning, got my on the court stuff, um, for about an hour and a half maybe. And then we go to the, to lift. Um, that's basically Monday through Friday. Um, a lot of conditioning, a lot of running and stuff like that. And obviously uh, on the court stuff, um, everything a little bit, but, um, yeah, and then on the weekends, probably just one, maybe two workouts, but um, not too much to, to mm-hmm. kind of recover and then get ready for the next week. You're used to it, though. Like, I, I, I'm thinking about me in that position, and I get homesick, and you're like, yeah, I've been away from Germany for a while now. Like, you're used to this stuff where you go and just kind of grind it out, and it's no big deal to you. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is different now that I'm basically on my own. I mean, yeah. you know, like, once you get to college, maybe the first two weeks are a little weird, but. <laughs> up until that point and then, then you have a couple friends and uh, then it's like a new home to you but um, it is a kind of a weird time um, I don't really know where I'm going in I don't know a month and a half so yeah um, that's a little weird but I had a couple friends visit me already um, so that was cool but um, yeah no I'm, I'm used to uh, being away from from family and stuff like that but it's definitely definitely a little adjustment for sure yeah I think it's a, it sets you up for success especially in the NBA you never know where you're gonna go you can yeah. be moved around at any time. So I think uh, that experience is very unique. Like American kids don't really get that as much, uh, not quite that same experience. But what is something, are you just kind of sharpening your skills right now? Or are you, are you looking to improve something before the draft and show teams and workouts? Or w- Take me through some of that and what you're working on. Well, I, I mean, I mentioned like a big part of those drills that you're going to do with the, with the teams is a lot of conditioning and just seeing yeah. where you are mentally and if you're um, willing to like push yourself in workouts. So that's one that's a big emphasis that, that we're doing in the workouts. Um, and then obviously working on the body, um, trying to get a little bit more athletic, more quick um, and stuff like that. Um, I think on the court for me, um, it's going to be important to, to show that I can shoot the ball really well, um, get more consistent there and then. Um, also show that I can do stuff with the ball and, and make decisions with the ball. I think um, that's one thing that um, I can set me apart from a lot of other players, especially in my position. So um, that's just something I, I'm trying to get better at. Now, I imagine the NBA has been a dream for you for a while, and it's got to be crazy to be so close to a dream coming true. And also your brother Mo in the NBA. Like, were you guys kids talking about playing in the NBA, or is this kind of, you know – new-ish in the last few years when you guys got good um i'd say we talked about it a little bit but um i talk about it with him um uh, a lot that growing up in germany like the nba is so far away that it's almost like frowned upon to like say yeah i want to make it there like because uh, <laughs> yeah. it's so far away so um, we talk about it just in our inner circle maybe and, and dream about it a little bit but i'd say for me it just became a goal I'd say once he made it and uh, that really made it like possible for me to um, that made it a little switch on my mindset too to uh, make it a goal for myself. But yeah, uh, yeah, it's definitely so far away when you grow up in Germany. I mean, you got Dirk um, obviously as uh, sticking out, but other than that, I mean, um, not too many German players. It's getting better now, but um, it's so far away for, I think for everybody in Europe. So um it's definitely a big dream since since i started playing basketball but um it got even even more close um as time went on as mo got drafted too was it was it more of playing for alba for the hometown team in in your league that was like the thing you guys talked about more than yeah i mean even that was a big step right you, uh-huh. you grow up you you don't know how good you can be right. and you just try to to work hard every day and try to get better but um yeah when once you kind of check that goal off and I, I played a year with that team that was that was super cool but um even then you don't know like you're still a young player you're still much, so much to learn um you're never like sure if it's actually going to happen so um I think I'm, I'm just trying to keep that mindset to just keep working hard every day and then 
all those things are just are just gonna come true hopefully yeah it's it's funny you're so level-headed in every interview i've heard you talk and all the quotes and you're just like you're very level-headed you're very, you're very much like me and mo's very different and i'm wondering how you know how that relationship was growing up was he always pushing you because as the older brother too and into basketball like i imagine he was just trying to beat you up in those one-on-one -on -one yeah games, like i did to my little brother yeah exactly there's there's no mercy um in those little one-on-one -on -one games um outside we haven't played in a while so um <laughs> uh that that might be what something for the future but um no i mean that's what the little brother is supposed to supposed to do though i think uh, i think that gave me a little advantage when i play against kids my age um just playing against someone that's almost five years older that's yeah. definitely hard and difficult to win and obviously he won a lot more games than i did but um that also just getting that competitive spirit still trying to win um even though you had a disadvantage i think um, that can only help you and only made me better, I think. And um, I think st still to this day, I think that that kind of helps me. There was a few times I think my mom was thinking she was going to have to call an ambulance because we were about to get into yeah. a fight. Did you guys ever have like a, a, oh, yeah. a certain moment or like a, a good story where there, maybe there's some blood or something going on? Uh, there was a lot of fighting. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a bad loser, so a so loser. So um, he was, probably, he probably put it right in your face. Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he he did his job. He he would beat me up on the court and then let me hear about it too. But um, like I said, I think in that moment I, I didn't really like him and we definitely got into a lot of fights. But um, I mean, the next day it was all cool again. Um, and yeah, it didn't do anything bad. But yeah, um, no, it's definitely definitely cool to look back though. Sure. Yeah, and it, it's such a now a cool relationship you guys have, and he can be an example for you and help you in your next step. Like how, how amazing has that been to have him go through it and help you with it all? Yeah. So, so great um, for me just to have someone just to look up to, um, see what it takes, see what kind of work you have to put in to, to make ne the next step um, on each level. Um, yeah. It's, it's super cool to see for me. Um, obviously it's super cool to, to have someone um, I can ask questions about, about the NBA, I did that same with college. So um, that's, that's super cool and um, super important for me, I think, and um, definitely made it a lot easier for me. Uh, I think his, his path was a little harder just having to figure it out um, just on his own um, and me having that advantage that, that he already did that. So um, that was definitely cool for me and I want to continue to, to use him as a resource. Um, yeah. Now was, um, yeah, he's a great guy, always willing to help me and, um, yeah, um, I mean, he's, he's going to show people on the court, I think, that um, he has a lot to offer. Um, yeah, I think he has a bright future as well. Yeah, I have no doubt he's got a chip on his shoulder. He's ready to prove sure. prove himself, that is for sure. So I'm hoping uh, I'm hoping he gets that opportunity. Um, yeah. But it, it, it was funny watching you uh, when you were 17, 18, playing for Alba, and I think you are in the playoffs – in Germany and like you were going off and like all the Euro hoop stuff that I follow on Twitter. And I was like, Oh, Franz going off for this 18 year old kid. And I was like, okay. And I watched your game a little bit. And then it was talking about you coming to Michigan possibly. And I'm like, there's no way like that he fits yeah. so well with Alba. He's going to do so well in Europe. And then boom, like, you know, beeline laugh and boom, Juwan got you, got you to come in. And I, you know, it helps that you had an example there with your brother, but like, what, what was it about Juwan and that call? Uh, that, that made you stay, uh, that made you go to Michigan? Um, I mean, it was super difficult for me. I was thinking back and forth, even, was, even when Beeline was, was still at Michigan, uh, just because the, the experience Mo had and he had only great things to say about, about his time there. So, um, I mean, it was, it was for me more, um, not just about the basketball side, but about the off-the-court stuff and, and learning a new culture and just getting to know new people. And then, also, though, playing in that environment, I think um, college is a lot different, um, different playing style. Um, obviously, I had, to, I had to get a lot more physical. I think there's way, ways in Europe um, to get away with not being physical more than, than it is in America, at least. Um, at least that's how I experienced it. And yeah. uh, I knew that that was something I had to work on to, to make it to the NBA. And um, that's why I thought it would be a good step for me um, on the court. And then um, the Juwan part, I mean, um, he's a great guy, special dude, just 
um, just how you, how you build relationships with people is um, it's very just just very special. So um, once once we had a couple conversations, I was uh, I was super happy to, to join his team. And um, I mean, looking back, it was it was the best decision I could have made. Yeah, no, it it worked out great. It was a lot of fun to watch you this year and like watch you develop from year one into year two and then throughout this past year even. Um, so I want to kind of get into some of that. Take me through some of that a little bit where you're, it was almost like watching you learn how good you were, how good you are. And that, you know, sometimes you got to just kind of take the ball and go with it. And, you know, yeah. one thing you're really, really, really good at is playing team basketball, moving the ball. Um, but then, you know, when you're one of your best players isn't being super aggressive uh, or aggressive enough, you know, it'll hurt the team. So it's like learning. Yeah. It was fun to watch you do that. And it was like in spurts and you'd go through yeah. you know, the struggles and stuff. But uh, was that a day by day process and, and something you had to discuss and learn uh, on your own? I mean, for sure. I mean, just comparing, like, if I would have stayed at home, I definitely wouldn't have had that experience just being one of the top guys on the team, having to play 30-plus minutes every game. Yeah. Um, and being one of the main guys, if I don't play well, um, our chances to win are uh, are a lot lower than if I have a good game. So just having that responsibility, I think, helped me a lot. Um, obviously, um, could have done some things better and struggled a couple times, but sure. I mean, that's part of it, I think. Um that's why I look back um, being so happy because I think I learned so much um, about myself, about what I can improve, um, um, what I have to improve. And um, yeah, it was, it was, like you said, the aggressiveness and playing within the team and stuff like that. It's something um, that I think about a lot and that people talk to me a lot about. But yeah. um, at the end of the day, I think it's always important to just make the right decisions in the game, um, but definitely learning when to be aggressive, uh, when to pass the ball and stuff like that. I think um, that's something that uh, was a big part this year. And uh, yeah, I think I learned a lot about that for sure. No, there was so so many times where I'm like, Fran, shoot the ball. And then you'll make yeah. it just a perfect pass for, for like a dunk yeah. for Hunter or something like, all right, it was just Franz knows what he's doing. Just let him, let him be yeah. a little bit. So it's gotta be, you know, a little annoying at times too, when, you know, change is difficult and change can be super annoying when you're like, ah, I play my game. Like, let me play my game. So yeah. you had to, you know, I talked to uh, coach Washington on one of these podcasts and, and talking about the process of talking with you about being aggressive and your whole, your whole growth process. Um, you know, how, how many times in film were they just, you know, looking in, in the video and being like, Hey, Frank, this is where you can shoot. This is where you can attack and be aggressive. Um, I don't know. I don't know about that. It was more like um, that was very evident in some some situations that um, I wasn't that sure of myself if I wanted to shoot or not. And um, we definitely talked about that. I think looking back at some film from last year, there was a lot of times when I get I have an open look and I, I just hesitate to shoot and then maybe I end up taking a, a worse shot than I usually had. So um, just stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I knew coming in that I'd have a bigger role in, in my first year and Mm -hmm. um, that was really cool for me to see to to get that kind of trust from from the team and, and from the staff and um i mean i, I did the work in the off season i, I felt really prepared and um yeah obviously now now i know better my game and what i got to work on even more but um i think this past year i think that experience just like i said just having to kind of carry a bigger load i think that helped me a lot yeah yeah definitely and this year you guys it was amazing to watch you guys had number one seed uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, not the end of the season that you guys were hoping for. The beginning was was incredible. Um, but then the tournament, you guys played well and won games. Um, and, you know, it was just like a roller coaster last month a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you know, what was that feeling going into the first game of that tournament, going to the number one seed, but you've lost you lost one of your top players and, you know, losing in the big 10 tournament like how, how was that that mindset going into the tournament um i mean i think we felt really confident um uh, even after the high state game with isaiah not playing uh, i think we lost by like one point we didn't even play our best game so yeah uh, it wasn't like we we weren't like super obviously we we're disappointed but we also knew that the big one was was uh still ahead of us so uh, we weren't confident into the game i was super hyped because it was my first tournament game so 
Uh, I think for a lot of the guys that, that was the same. So um, it was definitely cool. Um, I think the coaching staff did, did a great job. Like they always still preparing us for these games. Um, I think we had a we had a decent game the first game. Then ends LSU. I think um, we came back in the second half. So um, I think we got better as, as the tournament went on, and uh, obviously until the last game. But um, I mean, it was a cool experience. It was definitely unique with being in the hotel in the same same hotel the whole <laughs> whole time. Um, but yeah, it was it's definitely a cool experience. And um, I mean, obviously we should have we could have uh, done a lot a lot of things different and better. Um, but I think that's part of just growing and um, at the end of the day, just only one team can win. So um, that's how it is sometimes. Yeah. How, how did that feel after that last game? Like a sense of accomplishment, you know, or a lot of regret and anger that it was over and that you did, guys didn't do more. Like what was that yeah. feeling for you personally? I mean, I was more disappointed. I was more disappointed in myself than, than anything else. Um, I felt like we we had so many chances to win that last game um, that it still hurts today. I, I mean, I, I know I didn't sleep that night at all. <laughs> we we left, I think, like 11 a.m. I just um, came back at like 1 a.m. in the morning. I didn't sleep at all. So uh, I imagine for a lot of the other guys, it was the same. Just uh, we had so we expected so much more of us, I think. Uh, at the same time, I think it's important to know that we had a great year. and. Um, I think only one college team at the end of the day is, is saying, man, we, we we had a great tournament. So yeah. I think all the other teams that lost too, they they look back and wish they would have done some things different. But um, no, I think definitely our UCLA game um, is one thing I won't forget. And definitely that feeling after was, uh, yeah, it was not, not the best for sure. No, no. It was such a strange, strange year. I mean, just to see UCLA there at the end was bizarre for me and, you know, it was kind of one of those years where everyone was kind of, it was a strange, strange year for, for college basketball programs, just having weird success or failures throughout the entire yeah. year. I mean, Kentucky was bad for the entire year and then you said yeah. of nowhere. And it was just an interesting experience with COVID and, and the whole time, like we're trying to treat it like a regular basketball season, but it's not. And you guys are going yeah. through, you guys are at home by yourselves you guys had that month uh break three or four week break that you had to take and, and basically just stay at home you know have you do you think that made you guys a lot stronger and 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 you know made you come together because now it was it was just you guys there was really no campus life there was there was nothing yeah. else yeah that's a good point i think um it was that much more important to have a good chemistry on this past year and um i mean coach R did a great job with the guys he brought in uh, not just the freshmen, the transfers. I mean, Mike and Shondi um, fit in perfectly. Yeah. Um, really great, great dudes, uh, high character guys. Um, I think everybody on the team wanted to win um, for the next player. And uh, I think that's what made us really good. Um, even after that, I don't know, three week stretch, uh, we get back, um, play against Wisconsin, and we're like down 14 at half. Um, we still pull out a win. So uh, I think that was, for me, at least the moment where I knew. Uh, we'd have a chance to, to do something special um, mm. coming back after that uh, long pause where it wasn't really our fault that we couldn't play. Um, so um, that was definitely difficult. But, um, I mean, yeah, just a great group of guys. Um, the memories that, that we had this past year was, was great and definitely something I'll for, remember forever. Yeah, sure. definitely. Did you guys actually have bikes? Like, what, what, what workouts were you doing at home during that break? So I remember we... The first day of quarantine, I guess, we, we got some weights and uh, bands and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, obviously not a great weight room, but whatever whatever we can do, deliver it to the house um, or picked up somewhere or something like that. And then we just tried to make the best out of it, really. Um, it was really like, stay at your house. Don't don't go out. Um, order food. Um, Could you like run outside and, or were you just told to stay inside? Uh, we're told to stay inside, obviously, like, you can take some walks, I think, um, just to, I mean, that's at least what I did. But, um, yeah. I mean, yeah, coming back, that first practice, I remember we were all, like, it, it just felt so weird, like, after an off season, basically. But um, it's crazy, like, after the after UCLA game, like, all those things, like, added up, I think, over the course of the season. And after that last game, I just kind of felt like 
how tough this year was mentally, especially. And mm -hmm. um, I felt like during the season, it was crazy. You, you didn't really recognize it, but um, as, the, as the season went on, as it was when it, when it came to an end, that's, that's when I really realized like how much we've been through and um, yeah, how, how hard that really was. Yeah, there's always that weird, bittersweet sense of relief after yeah. the season's over. It's hard to explain, yeah. but like, you know, I, playing overseas, I'm like, you know, don't get too upset sometimes when we lose. It's it, it's a weird feeling to say that out loud because people are like, wait, don't you want to win this? Like, yeah, yeah. but I, it's like nice to be done yeah. as well. Yeah, um, uh, that's, that's definitely true. Yeah. What, when did you, I mean, obviously this has been in your mind talking about, thinking about uh, declaring for the draft and going to the NBA. Um, did you put that off mentally? Uh, I, I mean, I, I know you weren't distracted during the season, but like, do you, were you really actually just putting it off until the end of the season and then maybe even a little bit after, or were you, has this been a kind of a constant process for you? Mm, I mean, I knew it was going to be like, it was going to come up at some point, but mm. even after the season, I mean, at least two weeks, I, I mean, I watched a couple of games, but I didn't work out. Like I just needed a little break, I think for myself. And uh, the draft decision was part of that. Like, I, I didn't want to worry about that at all. Um, I mean, I knew it was going to come up. And then I talked to the coaches and stuff and uh, I think made a good decision. But, uh, yeah, definitely didn't try to think about that too much, I think. Yeah. Like, we, there, were, there was so much going on already, I think, uh, that would have been a little too much. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What? Because it's such an interesting process and something that, like, no, barely anybody else in the world can even – begin to think about making that decision like where where were you and where, where were you when you decide okay I'm gonna I'm gonna do it I'm gonna make that leap and now I'm gonna declare for the draft um I mean I really decided um right before I left in Arbor um but like so I, I went to Germany for a couple of weeks and um I just I the announcement came out like my third day day there and that's really just like the day before is really when uh, it may click for me that this is going to be real and um, that I'm, that I want to make this step. And um, up until that point, it was always like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And everybody was kind of expecting it too. But um, for me, it wasn't real until that the day before, before I really, when I really called the coaches and told them everything. And, um, Cause everybody thought I was going to do it at least around me, but um, <laughs> just leaving an Arbor, I mean, you know, it's, it's so difficult. There's so many great, great people there and mm. um, such a good time that you have there. So um, until I really left an Arbor and I kind of got settled at home, that's, that's when I really made the decision. Um, gotcha. for myself. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. What, how, how because the, like college recruiting and your recruiting story was very unique, but like college recruiting is one of those things where, you just kind of have to go through it. Like there's, there's no playbook for people to give you. You kind of have to experience it. And then hiring an agent is similar to that. It, it's like a little yeah. nerve wracking because there's so many options. It's a, it's a world you're never taught about. Like, did you kind of just go from referrals and use your connections and make like made a quick decision or was that a long process for you? Um, I mean, some, um, I knew a couple of people already and obviously Mo helped me with, with that too. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, after those two weeks that I mentioned earlier, I was just trying to not to talk to too many different people, um, too many agents, just trying to keep it more simple. Just um, I think that would be easier for me. Um, so I, I, I kind of decided on a little group and then I, I, I met with everyone and um, I felt really good with, um, with Mo's agent and uh, the meeting that, that we had. And uh, that's why I made that decision. But um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't that difficult for me like that college uh, decision, just uh, I think I learned from that and just try to keep it a little more simple. So, yeah. 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 Cause there's so, there's such big decisions. You can overcomplicate everything if you, yeah. Real easy. So, so how many agents in total you think like hit, hit you up? I mean, I had a bunch and I wasn't nearly as good or in high demand. So you must've had like a hundred at minimum. Um, I mean, it's funny. Like some people just hit you up on Instagram. Like, yep. um, and somehow find your email or your phone number or something like that from i mean some german agents hit me up like um uh, that know somebody that i know that have my phone number so um i don't know how many especially on instagram there's i mean what what do you call an agent right it's somebody can just hit you up basically and say they want to represent you but yeah uh, i would say i mean 
anywhere from 10 to 20 probably. But I mean, like I said, I didn't really consider um, many of those people um, just because I didn't want to make it too hard on myself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just ignore them. Keep it simple. That's, yeah. That's always the best policy. Yeah. Uh, where, how did you, where your English is so good. Like where, where did that come from? Where'd that start? Um, I always laugh. I always tell my mom, cause she, she always says that too. It, it just, um, I watch a lot of like, like YouTube basketball videos, like just highlight <laughs> clips and stuff like that. And just hearing the announcers speak. And, and then obviously, um, Mo coming to America and, um, we, a couple of times we went to America just for vacation, stuff like that. So, um, I just kind of picked stuff up, I think, through that and actually through school. But I think you really just learn when you talk. Uh, I think my first two months um, in Michigan, I think I learned I learned probably the most about how, how you kind of interact with people. Um, and then it's just, yeah, just doing it every day, obviously. At some point, it becomes natural. But, um, yeah, I think it started out with YouTube. basketball trusty, as well. Trusty YouTube, yeah, yeah always. Yeah. What, what was the biggest culture shock when you got, got over to America? um so here's like obviously i've been to america a couple of times so mm. nothing really shocked me like that um i'll just say a big adjustment is the food uh, i think uh, at least it was for me like that obviously in college is another thing because you don't have the most time but yeah uh, i mean i was at home i was home cooked meals and stuff like that and then you kind of just pick up whatever whatever is the cheapest and yeah yeah, yeah. Um, yeah but i would say that um yeah i don't know i don't know about anything else especially in harbor i think i was i was kind of familiar with a lot of things so yeah um, yeah they, they're still doing mr, mr. spots for the team yeah stuff. Man, for sure god i miss mr spots so bad he's <laughs> really cheesesteak <laughs> What, uh, what, like, what's a, what's some German food or like something that besides family that, that you miss the most, uh, from in, Germany? In Germany? Yeah. Um, besides family, I think one thing I really miss the most is, so this is coming back to an arbor, having options, um, past 10 PM. If it's food, if it's, like I feel like in an hour, especially when everything was closed. Obviously, it was last year, yeah, it was more extreme. But yeah, I feel like there was nothing to do. Like um, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. At, yeah, yeah, yeah. 10, 11 p.m. Other than that, I think a big difference is that you need a car. Um, so I grew up in Berlin, like in the middle of the city, um, just hanging out with friends. Like I had my bike, maybe, but other than that, like you can just use the tram, use the buses, and stuff. Um, that was always really cool. You didn't really have to plan. Um, we got to drive there and who drives back and stuff like that. I think, um, that's one thing that's pretty cool in Berlin, I think. Yeah, that's definitely a big difference. That's definitely a big difference too. I, I, in this past season, I played in like a really religious city and I mean, mm -hmm. places were closed at like 8 PM, yeah, 7 PM, so maybe open like three days of the week. I'm like, what the yeah. hell is going on right now? I yeah. can't eat anywhere. I have to travel like enough. 20, 30 minutes to go get some food late night if I wanted it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I'm curious because you got the experience and I've had McDonald's in Israel and it's very different from America. Is it, is which one's better for you, Germany or America? So I've had, I've maybe had McDonald's once in America. Um, so what did you get? It's probably, it's probably better here. Okay. Um, but honestly, I'm not the biggest fast food guy anyway. So, I, I mean, I didn't really go to McDonald's even back home. Like, maybe, like, on some road trips, we would stop there. But uh -huh. I couldn't I, – I wouldn't trust my, um, yeah, my judgment of, of the places. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. That's pretty fair. Uh, okay, a few more questions. One I want to ask you about the Berlin nightlife. And I heard it's amazing – and then you hear, you know, like crazy stories about college and frat houses and you see the movies and it's like a big exaggeration, but like definitely during the pandemic, it's like a letdown and not, nobody's doing anything. But yeah. what was your kind of perception of what it'd be? I guess Mo went through it and would tell, you, would tell you, but your perception and then when reality hits you when you got to school, like is, I feel like Berlin's just so 
such a cool city and the nightlife is so great and it's so great to be out in downtown and so busy that like you get to ann arbor and it's going to be seem super chill but like somebody from Indiana, um, like a farm town kid it's going to seem like a big city you know yeah i mean in that sense i don't know if the nightlife because obviously college parties are a thing for themselves and um, are pretty cool too but i think for the nightlife i mean i would just say um obviously like during the day like berlin there's a lot more people like it's a lot louder all the time and stuff like that. In that mm-hmm. sense, I think in Ann Arbor, there's a little bit more chill. But, um, you know, parties, uh, they're great at both places, I think. And I think there's something about, like, a college campus and just everybody going there. And, um, just everybody having that connection. Whereas in Berlin, like, <laughs> normal people are at the club that you don't know at all and stuff like that. So yeah. um, college campuses always feel like like a bubble where, um, some stuff you can just do it there and everywhere else people look at you like you're crazy yeah. <laughs> it's very true it's a very good way yeah. to put it it is a bubble it's always been a bubble like that yeah uh okay we got i got a couple more questions for you and then we'll get you out of here we already answered talked about your your last experience um or how you felt your last game and now this question we talked about nightlife a little bit but you're obviously were underage in uh ann arbor so if you don't want, you don't have to answer this, you don't want to, but I always ask everybody, Skeeps or Ricks? <laughs> um, I'd say Skeeps. Um, yeah. My guy. Okay. I, I appreciate yeah. that. I appreciate that. Everybody's basically been Skeeps. That's been impressive. I think Novak loved Ricks, <laughs> but that was, that was basically it. Uh, okay. Last question. What is one thing that sticks out to you the most that you learned and that you will carry with you um, from your time at Michigan? Um, I would just say, um, I'm, yeah, the reason why I came to college, I think, um, I think Juwan is someone that, that carries that with him, um, that stuff on the court matters and basketball matters, but how you treat people, um, what you do off the court, um, just the kind of person you are, um, I think that matters a lot more and means a lot more to people as well. And um, yeah, like I said, I think Juwan is the, the best example, um, a career that, that speaks for itself. But um, him as a person, he, he's even a, a greater guy than, uh, than anything else. So um, I'll just say that that's something I'll carry with me, um, that even if basketball um, sometimes doesn't work the way you want it to, um, that there's still a life beyond that. And um just enjoy that and um things will things will work out yeah no i could not agree more it's a good answer franz i appreciate you man i really appreciate you appreciate you coming on i gotta get mo on here maybe one of these days we can get you and mo at the same time get mo to talk some shit live on this podcast (laughs) but i appreciate you man uh, taking the time and yeah hopefully we'll talk soon enough and good luck with everything i know you're gonna be i know you're gonna be you know fulfill your dreams and do do great i have no doubts Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, no problem.